Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Adapting With. Today we're speaking with Steve Pacheco. Steve, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, thanks again for having me. Really happy to be here today and spend some time with you all. Uh, my name is Steve Pacheco, President and CEO of the American Advertising Federation, the AAF. And uh, our mission is simple. It's to be the unifying voice for advertising. And in doing that, we want to offer all of our AAF members the opportunity to be heard, to express their voice and their viewpoints uh, in important matters that affect us all. And as part of that, we uh, take our 40,000 members all across North America and make sure that they get the opportunity to be heard and to be a part of something bigger than just their local club. How has leading AAF changed in the last few months or, you know, in this year? You know, you said, was it, a, you said a year and a half ago you came on? Or was it yeah. like, right? So you kind of started before the world got weird and then, and then everything happened with the pandemic. So kind of give us a little lay of the land of how you had to adapt and, you know, adjust your thinking and the processes to, to fit what we're into now. Sure. The, the biggest change in adaptation for the AAF and our staff has been to do everything remotely and everything virtually. Uh, we, you know, we're in the events business. We do a ton of really powerful face-to-face -face, uh, human interaction meetings and events. And, and for us to have to gear more towards virtual and digital events uh, has been a, a learning curve for us. Um, I'm pleased to say we've accepted it and done really, really well with it back last November. We were able to put on our first ever Fall of Achievement, which is our 40 Under 40 Awards, um, virtually, completely virtually, and from, I think, a total of 14 different locations. And we actually got more attendance by doing it online than we would have in the traditional way, which is a, you know, a gala at an event space where we typically top out at 300, 400 attendees. That's great. What, what are some other ways, you know? obviously being advocacy and, and helping out in advertising, it, it's like you said, it's a little more difficult not having the normal events and stuff that we're kind of were accustomed to. But so how have you helped, you know, advocate for our industry as well as, um, you know, help the other clubs across the, you know, the country, you know, navigate these times? Yeah, our, our advocacy work is, is generally regarded and held up as, as the de facto best in the business for the advertising industry. Uh, as such, it's really important for us to be on the cutting edge and know about all the different pending legislation, all the things that are coming down the road, and to anticipate those as best we can. So, you know, by the time you react, it's probably too late. So we spend a lot of time uh, tracking trends and seeing where things are headed. With, with an all-new administration in place in D.C. at the national level, we have, uh, we have an awful lot of things on our, on our priority list state by state. There's a lot of things happening. Florida and California are warming up right now. We just uh, fought a Maryland digital ad tax um, that, was, that was the first of its kind. Uh, spending a lot of time on data and on privacy issues. And our team is uh, focused and ready to respond as quickly as we can. That's, that's a lot of what people join the AAF for, is the advocacy work and to be able to be part of that grassroots initiative. And what's, you know, how have you... How have you been able to adapt and continue that work specifically in the last year? You know, I'm a big believer that digital transformation has affected all of us and in many cases made our lives easier or simpler. And so by tracking uh, a number of the advocacy efforts that are going on across the country, we're able to more quickly respond through digital means. Uh, we're able to quickly get news blasts and emails out and also uh, our point of views uh, on different legislative efforts. So the digital transformation that's occurring uh, at, at light speed all across the country is actually being a huge assist to us as we do our day-to-day -day work. And, uh, and it's making us being, it's making us more, more nimble and quicker to respond to a lot of these hotspots. You know, and like specifically to like your team, those that you work close with to, to advocate for us and, and, and be a, and run the national advertising federation. What, how have you adapted specifically to operate and continue doing the great work that you do? Yeah, the, the AAF staff has is, is really been great um, in responding to working virtually. We're doing weekly check-in calls. We're keeping up with each other as best we can. But, but also, you know, the, the intimacy of it, being able to jump into someone's uh, home office or, or anywhere in their dining room or their kitchen table has actually opened up a whole world of, of you know, the sense of humanity about everyone. Um, so I think that's one of the bright spots that have come out of this is that we're always accessible. Everybody's got opportunity to, to weigh in and, and we're making sure we check on each other day to day. That's great. Is there anything in particular that you feel like you've learned or discovered um, from this experience and, and having to adapt in this way that has been super useful for you? 
I think I'd answer with two two thoughts. One is just you know relationships still matter, and we had we had really powerful relationships with a number of our key supporters. Certainly, well before all this started, as a hundred year old organization, we've got deep roots and, and some really powerful relationships that go way back. So we've been able to leverage some of those relationships and and the longer established the relationship is, I think the more trust and transparency are there. So that's that's on one side. On the second side is that just the opposite is true. It's, it's opened us up to a whole new world of new people that we're being able to meet through Zoom calls and interactive opportunities where we really feel like we've expanded our reach and been able to uh, get ourselves in front of people that we might not have been able to before. So people are willing to give us a moment of their time to let us tell the AF story and the old relationships are still powerful and still uh, uh, productive, but we've also made a lot of new friends through all this and, and people are willing to, uh, to meet us where they are, if you will. You know, obviously I think current members know the importance and value of being a member of the group. Um, but why, kind of a twist to that, why is it more important now than ever, even with the pandemic in mind, to be a member of this organization? If you had like three points to it. Yeah, the, the membership value in your AAF membership is, I've, I think, never been greater. And uh, I think there are three reasons for that. One is certainly the connectivity and the access that you get through all of our corporate members, our professional members. That includes everything from mentorships to internships. I'm mentoring three college uh, young professionals right now and being able to do it over, over Zoom calls. So normally I would only be able to do one. Uh, on the second level is is business development and how a lot of our corporate members are using the AAF network to build their business. Um, you have to remember that most ad clubs have a monthly luncheon or a get together or an opportunity to meet in person. With lockdown, they've been unable to do that. So the opportunity exists for our corporate members to be able to come in and do webinars and road shows and interactive Zoom calls to, to display their products and services to a larger group in most cases. Um, and then, and then the third uh, real value of the membership is, is really up to you and what you choose to make of it. Um, more and more of our AF clubs are doing social hours. They're doing uh, happy hours and, and you know, Zoom beer calls and, and uh, whiskey tastings and you name it. We've got very creative groups across the nation and uh, they'll find a way to take that membership base and to have some fun with it and do some great things. So the membership is what you choose to make of it, but we think there's some built-in values and benefits of, of being an AF member. And uh, we're always open for net new memberships and, and bringing more people into the fold. What are you doing to help members pivot in there? Or how did you help, you know, maybe, maybe got most of your members pivoted, you know, in this time, but how, what has kind of happened? What's transpired in the last, in the climate of the pandemic that you've kind of helped members kind of navigate through to adjust? Well, our members are pretty savvy. Remember, they're the most creative and resourceful people in each market area. So we get the best of the best, and they're already pretty savvy and pretty sophisticated with technology and innovation. If anything, uh, we've learned from them because a lot of them have taken the new platforms and new opportunities, and they've made the best of it. So uh, we go around the horn about once a month and, and pick up the best practices from our clubs all across the network, and we're always learning something from them. Uh, in return, we're giving them uh, more access to more programs and events and webinars and things like that than ever before. Is there anything that sticks out to your mind? Uh, I think that's a great uh, insight about, you know, learning from the members, right? And like kind of bottom up, like grassroots kind of mentality. Like, is there anything that sticks out to you that you've learned from the members that, you know, you think's worth sharing for the other members that'll be watching this video? Well, I think, I think a couple of things really, you know, again, our members are, are I, I'm impressed every day by what I see on just how, creative and resilient they are. The creativity stands for itself and, and we always bring the, the cream of the crop from the creative side of things, but they're problem solvers at heart. Uh, most people in this business are to some degree, so they'll figure out a way to make it work. We wanna give everybody the freedom and flexibility to do what they wanna do in their own markets, but at the national level, we're there to provide support and guidance and the infrastructure to help run the club networks. Wonderful. Um, if you had one thing that you think worked best for you and kind of, you know, pushing through and, and working through this pandemic, what, what was it for you that, that allowed you to be successful? You know, that's a, that's a really tough one and, and, and a great question. But, but fundamentally, and, and part of this comes with maturity, I think, over the years, but you've got to learn to take the long view. It's, it's really easy to get, um, to get down or to get, you know, frustrated by what's happening in the here and now. And, and 
you know, there's an old adage that says this too shall pass. And we will weather this storm and we will power through. The AF has been around since 1905. They've seen a few rocky storms <laughs> and rocky roads. So um, just taking the long view has been my secret to all this and wondering what's out there three, five, and seven years from now, because that's what I want to be focused on. That's how I want to uh, organize the, the, the teams to be ready for what's next and what's coming. Um, where, speaking of that long view, where do you see the industry going in the next five, 10 years? Well, that's, you know, <laughs> you'll get six different answers if you ask five different people. Um, the, the, <laughs> there's, there's so many things that we do know are going to happen. Fragmentation will continue to occur. Um, the word advertising is blurring even as we speak about what it means, uh, you know, and, and different people want to define it in very different ways. But the art of persuasion and the ability to uh, change behaviors is, is always going to be there. It's been there since day one, and it will always be there. So I think we're going to have a pretty bright future. I just think that the mechanics of it and the structure of, of the old line ad agency uh, structure, the old line holding company structure, the old line media holding companies, all that is going to be under attack and, and undergo some pretty radical change, I think, when it's all said and done. You're, you're seeing upstarts, things like Clubhouse that have just popped up. And while they don't have an ad model now, I bet you they will. Uh, things like that are typically disruptive forces. I couldn't be more excited to be uh, in this position at this time and see so much radical change taking place. But I also think that the two things are always going to come through. And that's creativity, which is the last marginal difference. Uh, and execution, the, the opportunity to produce things really, really well that people see as an art form and and see as entertainment or enjoyment and, and actually enjoy spending time with and being engaged with. How do you think the idea of like how successful work from home has kind of worked in our industry, I think for the most part, how do you think that's going to accelerate or change that, you know, kind of the disruptive nature that generally happens every five to 10 years with technology we want anyways? Like what, what do you foresee in kind of that vein of things? Well, it's, it's going to, greatly accelerate people's acceptance of different work styles, personalities, backgrounds, diversity, all those things that we've been practicing for, you know, for decades at the AAF. The, the opportunity to disrupt uh, the old line model of showing up at the office at nine o'clock and leaving at five o'clock. The nature of our business is that we do it remotely anyway. <laughs> Nobody actually concepts and shoots at the same site. If you think about it, there's always, you know, shoot, move and, and go on to the next thing. That's that's been the, the mantra of a lot of how we get things done with all this stuff that we're talking about with the, you know, the, the inevitable disruption, the, the diversity and work from home kind of opportunities. What, what's the greatest opportunity you see? Well, I think it's I think it's uh, twofold. One is just the opportunity to to realize that geography doesn't matter and that you can be producing work anywhere in the world from where you sit. And, and you got to get your head wrapped around that because it's a big statement. But the fact of the matter is, is, as I watched the Super Bowl this year, you know, most of that work was produced under incredibly difficult situations and scenarios. And yet the work itself didn't suffer. It was actually pretty outstanding work from a production standpoint. You're not just relegated to the Pittsburgh area now. You have a global village that you can pull from. And, and actually expand your opportunity to do great work. The second thing is that the camaraderie and the team building and the culture of advertising teams, you know, I think is still under attack and, and it's a very, very valuable trade. It's why people uh, commit to agencies. It's why people wanna work in this business, you know, uh, go across timelines and borderlines and zip codes and everything else and, and be able to offer your wisdom and expertise out to other people I think is really, really powerful. And if, a, if an agency's culture is strong enough, they're going to survive, they're going to be okay because people are always going to come back for that, that hit of culture and the opportunity to be part of something that they believe in. People want to be engaged with something that's either purpose-driven purpose driven or mission-focused. And I think you're going to see a lot more of that uh, going forward. People are going to want to know what, what your company stands for, what good they're doing in the world and, and what their purpose is and, and uh, conducting business. We've all had a year of adaptability. Um, I had an old boss one time who said, if you don't like change, you're going to really hate obsolescence because you're either going to adapt or die. And, and there are no options. You know, 
Adaptability is critically uh, important, maybe now more than ever before. And if you can prove how you've adapted through all this or what you've learned from it or how you've changed or shifted through this, uh, I think it'll make you a more marketable candidate and, and certainly a better person to work with. Steve, thank you so much for joining us today and for your wonderful insights. Hope you enjoyed the show. We have more episodes lined up and coming to you soon. So like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thank you.